If you're into classic TV, then you've probably heard of the Wild Wild West. This 1965 series blended the Wild West with spy fiction, creating a unique cocktail of action and intrigue. But did you know there are plenty of funny, shocking, and even sad facts behind the scenes? Keep watching to find out. When did you first watch this series? Or which classic Hollywood actor was your favorite? Share your cherished memories or personal experiences with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Back in 1965, a really cool TV series came out that got everyone talking. It was set after the Civil War and followed two government agents as they traveled around the Wild West, dealing with all sorts of problems to keep the country safe. What made this show special was how it mixed things up. It took the cowboy vibe of westerns and added in a big dose of spy action. People loved how different and exciting it was. In the 60s, when the world was going through a lot of changes, this show gave folks a break. It was like a fun escape from all the serious stuff happening in real life. As the series went on, it became super popular. They made all kinds of stuff based on it, like toys and comics. They even made a movie about it. Even now, people still love the Wild Wild West. Fans, both old and new, really enjoy the stories and characters. It's proof that good entertainment lasts through the years, no matter how much TV changes. Robert Conrad performed most of his own stunt work on the series, resulting in numerous injuries. During one episode shooting, he slipped while performing a stunt, falling head first onto a concrete floor 12 feet below. This serious injury delayed production for nearly three months. Victor Buono received the 1972 Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Award for Distinguished Performance for his role in Henry Roman IV, Part I at the Mark Taper Forum Theater. Richard Keel penned his autobiography, making it big in the movies, published in 22 by Reynolds and Hearn of London, England. Ford Rainey, known as the Wizard by Neighborhood Children, tended beehives at his Malibu ranch house. In his later years, at the age of 90, he bred birds and won trophies in Southern California competitions. Robert Conrad and his wife eloped, living under the assumed name Robert Conrad to avoid their parents. They revealed their whereabouts in May of 1952 after discovering his wife's pregnancy, anticipating their parents' inability to annul the marriage. During the fourth season, Ross Martin's absence due to a heart attack led to Charles Aidman, William Shallert, Alan Hale Jr., John Williams, and Steve Carlson appearing in various episodes. Martin returned for the Night of the Diva, and only four more episodes followed. William Shallert, known for his roles in The Trouble with Tribbles and Inner Space, joins Robert Picaro as one of the two actors to appear in both Inner Space and Outer Space. Robert Conrad, best remembered for his portrayal of James West, captivated audiences in the iconic series. Richard Keel, who attended the Mad Monster Party in Charlotte, NC, also participated in a panel alongside William Shatner and Anne Serling, daughter of the Twilight Zone creator Rod Serling, showcasing his diverse engagements beyond the wild, wild west. Rory Calhoun was initially chosen to portray James West. However, the role eventually went to Robert Conrad. In June 1969, Robert Conrad was set to star in a film called Seven Against Kansas alongside Richard Crenna and Tippi Hedren. Filming commenced in Almeria, Spain, but there's no evidence that the project was completed. On another note, William Schaller participated in the premiere production of The Playhouse in Los Angeles in June 2001, appearing alongside Harry Hamlin. In the world of showbiz, some actors face tough decisions about the roles they take. One actor, known for his towering presence, turned down the chance to play a beloved character in a popular space movie. Instead, he chose to stick with a role where he felt he could make a bigger impact. On the other hand, another actor earned recognition for his outstanding performance in a theater production, showcasing his talent both on stage and on screen. These actors made strategic choices in their careers, each carving out their own path to success. In the world of classic TV, there were two trains owned by James and Artemis. One was all dark and mysterious, perfect for their secret missions in black and white scenes. The other was famous for its green and gold look, filled with cool gadgets that wowed viewers every episode. Robert Conrad did all his own stunts until he had a scary accident. But he kept on pushing the limits to give audiences thrilling action scenes. Ross Martin, who worked closely with Peter Falk, was a great actor who even taught Falk a thing or two. His talent made every scene he was in feel real and interesting. The Wild Wild West TV show isn't just any old series. It's a reminder of how creative and skilled the people behind it were. Their work has inspired many storytellers over the years, showing that good ideas and hard work can make something unforgettable. 
Robert Conrad, known for his role in the Wild Wild West, declined an offer to portray Hannibal Smith in the A-Team, opting instead to focus on producing his own projects. The series shared minor cast members with other popular shows of its time, including Star Trek, Batman, Get Smart, Mission Impossible, Lost in Space, The Time Tunnel, and The Twilight Zone. Ross Martin, who starred alongside Conrad, was in discussions with him for another installment of the series before his death in 1981. Their plans for a new venture remained unrealized. In one episode of the series, the title deviates from the norm by omitting the usual the. This anomaly occurs in the fifth episode of the first season titled Night of the Casual Killer. Ross Martin, known for his exceptional talent in dialects, ventured into radio during his 20s. He juggled roles in three daytime radio serials simultaneously, even portraying a 62-year-old Viennese man. His versatility led him to feature in eight major series across different networks. Eventually, he hosted his own radio show, The Ross Martin Show. Anthony Caruso's path crossed with his future wife, Tonia, at San Francisco's Alcazar Theater in 1939. The coincidence happened as Tonia's play was concluding, while Anthony's was commencing its run. Before joining the Secret Service, James West served as a captain in the U.S. Army, though in one episode of the fourth season, he was mentioned as a former major. Richard Keel, who appeared in the series, famously bit through a cable made of licorice in The Spy Who Loved Me. Originally considered for the title role in another TV series, Keel was replaced due to not being bulky enough and issues with his sight. He was replaced by Lou Ferrigno and ultimately felt relieved because of discomfort with full contact lenses. In the wake of Ross Martin's heart attack, Charles Aidman joined the cast to cover his absence. This adjustment aimed to maintain the show's continuity during Martin's recovery. In an interesting turn of events, Robert Conrad, the lead in the 1965 TV series, attended the 1999 Razzie Awards when the theatrical remake of The Wild Wild West received multiple dubious honors, including Worst Picture. Conrad, expressing his dissatisfaction, personally accepted three of the awards and then delivered them to the actual recipients. The show is noted for incorporating a recurring science fiction theme, showcasing inventors in the wet 1870s crafting technology that would only emerge decades later in reality. This thematic element is now recognized as steampunk, a term coined in the 1980s. Following the passing of Norman Lloyd at the age of 106, Nehemiah Persoff became the oldest living male Star Trek actor at 101, while Marsha Hunt claimed the title of oldest living Star Trek actor overall at 104. All three appeared on Star Trek The Next Generation. Nehemiah Persoff's performance in The Dibuck earned him the 1975 Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Award for Distinguished Performance in a Supporting Role at the Mark Taper Forum Theater in Los Angeles, California. Michael Dunn and Phoebe Doran once had a nightclub act called Michael Dunn and Phoebe. James West, born on July 2, 1842, was named after his uncle. Nehemiah Persoff, who portrayed a character in the series, lost his wife, Thea Persoff, in 2021 after 70 years of marriage. Robert Conrad, who played a lead role, mentioned that the tight pants he wore on the show often split during action scenes, revealing his period incorrect jockey shorts and wide angle shots. This wardrobe malfunction was particularly evident in fight scenes. Richard Keel, known for his role as Jaws in the James Bond films, made a notable appearance in The Spy Who Loved Me. Interestingly, his son, Richard George, also had a part in the same film as The Young Boy on the Beach. All scenes set inside the train were filmed on a studio set with removable walls for camera maneuverability. Despite attempts to simulate outdoor environments, the presence of a visible bush outside the train window remained consistent, even in desert scenes. Richard Keel's portrayal of Jaws, the steel-toothed assassin, left a lasting impression in the James Bond franchise, appearing in both The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker. Back in 2000, Richard Keel, who played Jaws in James Bond movies, showed up at a big sci-fi convention in Sweden. At the same time, William Schallert, known for playing Martin Lane in The Patty Duke Show, got recognized as one of the top TV dads by TV Guide in 2004. Interestingly, even though he wasn't given credit on screen, a review from 1962 points to Keel as Pinhead No One in the Magic Sword. This shows how actors like him often don't get the credit they deserve. These little details help us understand how movies and TV shows are made by lots of people, not just the ones in the spotlight. They also show us how talented actors like Keel and Shallard are. Their work still inspires people today. Tall actors like Richard Keel, Fred Gwynn, and Ted Cassidy often got mixed up back in the day. Gwynn played Herman Munster on a famous 60s sitcom, 
while Cassidy was known for his deep voice as Lurch in another beloved show. Despite looking alike, each actor had their own special talents. In the series, the character known as Miguelito was one of the bad guys. His name means Little Michael, which adds a cool twist to his character. Ross Martin, famous for playing Artemis Gordon, made a big impact on viewers. He and his partner went on all sorts of adventures together, making their mark on TV history. These little facts give us insight into the actors and elements that made the show popular. Each actor brought something different to the table, and even the names of the characters added to the show's charm. Richard Keel portrayed the character with metal teeth in the movie Silver Streak before reprising it in James Bond films. In Silver Streak, his character was named Reese due to copyright issues with the name Jaws. William Shallert appeared in several films directed by Joe Dante. Robert Conrad was inducted into the Stuntman's Hall of Fame for his work. In the beginning, there was a TV series that mixed spies with cowboys, creating something totally new. The person who came up with this idea saw it like James Bond riding a horse, blending spy stuff with the wild, wild west. One of the actors, Richard Keel, who later played Jaws in James Bond movies, added his own evil touch to the show. He also worked with William Shatner in another series inspired by the first one. Behind the scenes, there were three old hands, a stuntman named Whitey Hughes, a makeup guy named Ken Chase, and Richard Keel himself. They shared stories about what it was like on set and working with the lead actor, Robert Conrad. Their tales give us a peek into how hard everyone worked to make the show exciting, from the cool stunts to making the characters look just right. This series didn't just stop when it ended. It inspired lots of other filmmakers and writers with its mix of genres and how it made its characters. It's like a reminder of the great ideas and hard work that went into it. Originally titled The Wild West, the show underwent a name change to The Wild Wild West, a decision made for its perceived better sound. Robert Conrad, portraying Jim West, wore three-inch heels, and the casting directive limited female hires to those under 5'6". Ross Martin, upon receiving the script, meticulously crafted his character through a detailed pen and ink drawing, which served as a blueprint for his transformation with makeup artist Don Schoenfeld, ensuring every aspect matched the envisioned portrayal. Ross Martin, skilled at riding, merely tolerated horses without much affection. Richard Keel faced mobility challenges post a 1992 car accident, often relying on a walking stick or scooter. His scenes in Happy Gilmore prominently avoid showing him walking. In a difficult situation, Richard Keel, with only one eye, struggled in costume as the Hulk in The Incredible Hulk pilot. He received compensation, which allowed him to pursue Silver Streak. The show's opening sequence underwent a notable change between seasons. Initially presented in black and white, it featured West kissing a woman who then attempts to stab him, only for him to tip his hat as she leans against the wall smiling. However, from the second season onward, now in color, the scene takes a more action-packed turn as Wes gives the woman a roundabout punch, leaving her stunned on the floor. Robert Conrad, one of the stars of the series, had plans for another installment of the show with his co-star Ross Martin before Martin's passing in 1981. Additionally, three veterans from the original series, Stuntman Whitey Hughes, makeup artist Ken Chase, and actor Richard Keel, shared their memories of working on the show and with Conrad in the book A Sci-Fi Swarm and Horror Horde by Tom Weaver.